Well, good morning and welcome to the LBJ Grasslands outside of Decatur, Texas, and part two of the field testing of the Dark Energy Spectre. I'm here at a campground, and in our last exciting episode, we looked at a number of things, including the accessory kit, how easy was it to carry the overall unit in a backpack, did a realistic field deployment, but, and you know there's always a but. What happens if you don't have the accessory kit? What happens if a ground deployment is just not possible based on your circumstances at the time? What if you are a through hiker and you spend most of the day on your feet? What options do you have for topping off charge on your phone, for example? And how does it work in realistic conditions? Well, I'm going to look at uh, some of those questions today and hopefully provide you a few answers. And since through hikers were most responsible for requesting this review in the first place, the very first thing I'm going to look at is, we've got it right here, backpack carry. Well, I've got the Spectre set up on my pack. It's not the best setup, but uh, I think it will be workable. Now, in this particular setting, I'm getting a three in terms of efficiency, but it's angled literally right back into the sun. If uh, you're hiking, you're just going to have to deal with whatever conditions happen to be present at the time, and those are going to change over the course of your hike. So what I'm going to do is you can kind of see the current sun position right here. It's going to be heading in that direction throughout the day. I'm going to go out to this road, go all the way out to FM 2560. I'm going to try to take care of some of my uh, U.S. Forest Service volunteer responsibilities while I'm at it. I will come across a number of campgrounds on the way, go into the campground, and pick up trash. I'm just going to go out, all the way back, may walk down here. I'll keep a timer going, and uh, my phone right now, I let the charge run down, is at uh, 76 percent. So we'll see how much I can top that off uh, over imperfect conditions. But quite honestly, I, I don't know about you, but I live in an imperfect world. So 95, 99 percent of the time, that's what all of us deal with, are imperfect conditions. We'll see uh, what I can get in terms of uh, charging. It's an iPhone 14 Pro Max. Time of year is end of January, time of day, approximately 11 a.m. Well, let's get started. All right, there is total mission time, a little over an hour and a half. The sun was at the most favorable angle on the outbound, which took 47 minutes. That's largely uphill. It's uh, quicker coming back, although it's hard to estimate how much time I spent either way collecting trash. Um, not ideal conditions uh, in either direction. In fact, on the way back, the sun was in my face pretty much the entire time. About the only thing I could do was if it was off to one side, I could incline my body just a little bit while I was walking and see if I can pick up a little extra sun on these edges. This is, of course, not the best way to charge a phone in the first place. Uh, oh, yeah, 
there's the uh, trash haul for the day, pretty considerable. Um, ideally, what you would want to do is top off your power bank and then um, use the power bank to charge the phone later. Anyway, let's get right to the bottom line. Uh, roughly an hour and a half, not very good uh, conditions at all. I got 5% additional charge. Uh, that wildly exceeded my expectations. Um, I guess I got a lot better than I expected when the sun was in favorable conditions. Now, this also kind of answers the question of what you do if you don't have the accessory kit. And that is if you can take your pack and mount it on your pack and then lay it down by a tree, uh, a bush, something like that. Uh, anything where you can incline the panels uh, better to the sun then uh, you can get some reasonable charge without necessarily uh, having that stand. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, leave it in this configuration for just a little while, charge it some more, uh, kind of see what it gets in perhaps a little bit more favorable circumstances. Okay, so what I did was simulate a situation where I'm a through hiker. Uh, I took a 30 minute lunch break. I could put my pack down. I've got some control of the situation. You can see I've taken a smog. And I've kind of been working on the angle and I was actually able to get threes and fours for about five to 10 minutes. But the problem is, as the sun moved across these trees, now I've got shadows off on the panel and it's actually pretty hard to get an angle that supports a two on the efficiency meter. Okay, so the fact though, see there, it just switched to three. It's uh, incredibly sensitive, but that, uh, that long segment that I was able to hold threes and fours, I was actually able to top off another couple percent in 30 minutes, but only because I was able to sit and very carefully control the angle to the sun. I hope, you know, what this is showing is that it's incredibly sensitive to sun conditions. So when I was out there with that on my back, if I don't have somebody with me constantly monitoring the efficiency, you could almost say that it's pot luck in terms of what I, what I get. I was very fortunate that I had a long number of intervals where that sun was at a bit lower angle because it's winter and it was directly uh, at my back. Okay, I've got one more setup I want to show you. I'm not going to charge from it, but I just want to show it to you because it's uh, very similar to what I just talked about, and then we'll shut this exercise down. Okay, I'm trying to show you that if I can get the angle just right, you can generate fours. This is the worst filming I've ever done, but just to show you again the sensitivity to sun angle. I hope that's coming out. I can't even see what I'm shooting. Okay, but you know, it is possible to get ideal efficiency, but you really have to get the angle just right. And of course it works best when the panels are largely flat and perpendicular to the sun. So I hope that helps you out. So I always keep flexible ties with me. You could use bungee, for example. And so here's a situation where, again, let's say this is just uh, a rest interval, maybe, or a lunch break. Uh, I'm getting into my pack a lot. I, I want to take it off my pack and just put it up by a tree. I can take advantage of the flexibility of the specter. Again, I'm not going to get great efficiency, um, here I'm just managing a two, but it's a steady two. If this were a 30-minute uh, to an hour break, I could at least get something out of that. So these are just some things that you can think about, some ways to deploy it without the uh, accessory kit. And again, my idea would be if I'm out for a protracted period during the day, all I'm counting on this for is something to help top off my power bank and then I would charge my uh, devices from the power bank. So um, I hope that gave you some things to think about. Overall I think the lightweight 
the flexibility, and boy, having that efficiency indicator to really help me fine tune the overall effectiveness of the product or the big features. And I hope you got some useful information out of these field tests. If there are other tests you'd like to see, let me know. Again, I've been testing under uh, very adverse, ineffective conditions, but I like to see what I can count on in those circumstances because if the conditions are better, my results will only be better. So in some respects, I'm just trying to establish a uh, baseline here at the outset the outset of testing this product. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut this test down. And as always, until the next review, thank you very much for your time and thank you for watching the video.